Mm-hmm. And I'm a Jimmy Cliff girl, Gaston. Yes. We can get it if we really want to, but we must pray. <laughs> and therefore, that's what we're going to do. We all know the issues relating to small island developing states. We all know the issues related to the climate crisis and how we are on the front line and we didn't cause it. We all know the decimation of tourism and travel dependent economies, which many SIDS are with respect to COVID. And regrettably, when we thought that 2021 was going to be better, the only thing that 2021 has done is to bring our enterprises closer to the brink of bankruptcy and insolvency and has pushed greater pressure on our our societies. And regrettably, Delta is now hitting us where it hurts most in our families, in our houses, in our communities. So let's go straight to what we want from COP26 and what Barbados's main ask are and what we're seeking support from our colleagues in EOSIS for so that we can go to Scotland with one voice. The latest report from the IPCC is stark. Yes, it is a code red for humanity. We need to have our emissions by 2030, yes, and get to net zero by 2050. But for that, and for many of us, that's not even enough. Small island developing states like us have led the way in delivering our NDCs for COVID. In our own case, we have committed to reduce our emissions economy-wide by 70% by 2030, and as close to 100% by 2035. But we've given ourselves a pausing point in 2025 to see if we can even exceed that target of 70% by 2030. So my friends, the next nine years are crucial. Indeed, if you look at the Sky Television Network that reminds us that we move from 1.2 degrees to 1.5 degrees in less than 12 years, it then becomes even more stark for us. It is unacceptable for our development partners to reduce or to pledge to reduce the net zero in 2050, but yet not take the urgent short-term actions necessary to get us on to a 1.5 degree trajectory in the next 12 years. And regrettably, we are not seeing any major changes on their part to accept that that 1.5 degrees to keep us alive is so critical. COP26, my brothers and sisters, needs to find the political space to discuss the ramifications of the second synthesis report on the updated or the new NDCs. And this is scheduled, I'm told, to be released later this month. The previews already indicate that the report will highlight that the vast majority of NDCs which have been submitted are inadequate and regrettably put us on a path for around 2.7 degrees Celsius of warming by the end of the century. That is why the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has been so strident in wanting to speak the inconvenient facts and truths to each of us, because unless it is done now, it will simply be too late for too many. This, my friends, must be what drives us over the next 40 days. COP26 has to send a strong message that those countries who have submitted NDCs, which are incomparable with a 1.5 pathway, should be urged to resubmit as soon as possible and not wait until the next round of submissions in 2025. And we get it. Yesterday, we heard President Biden commit to another sum of money, which brings us closer to the goal. But we also heard China commit to coal fact, no more coal plants outside of China. But those things may simply not be enough to get us where we need to go. And we need to thank them for recognizing that they have um, needed to move, but we need to still urge them that it will simply not be enough to avert climate crisis, climate migration, and the implosion of small societies such as ours. The synthesis report, I'm told, will also stress the degree of conditionality and the level of mitigation ambition contained in a number of the NDCs. Simply put, most of us, including my own country, have said that we can do more if we have access to more financing, more technology transfer, and indeed more capacity building. My colleagues, it is essential, therefore, that COP26 delivers on predictable, accessible, and affordable finance, not only for mitigation, but as we've said over and over, especially for adaptation, and that we direct that that finance must go where it is most needed. So what are some of the additional asks that we put on the table for this AOSIS summit that we ask you, my brother Gaston, to please help us shepherd? One, that 40% 
of the long promised minimum of $100 billion per year up to 2025 is set aside for financing adaptation and building resilience in small island developing states. And we ask this recognizing that most of it and a lot of it will need to be grant financing because most small island developing states simply do not have the fiscal space, even if the money is made available to us. And why 40%? Because AOC states constitute at least one quarter of the world's community. But we know that there has been a disproportionate impact on us. And therefore we believe that we need that access for the next few years in order to help us right size what needs to be done with the majority of it as grant funding. We cannot agree that we should crowd out our access to development funding simply because we are the victims of the greed and the reckless behavior of the G G20 countries who are responsible for 80% of the greenhouse gas emissions. Secondly, that the special drawing rights for sustainable development are increased significantly. We propose that the world's strongest economies lend their SDR allocation to an IMF administered global disaster mechanism. The global disaster mechanism will provide immediate liquidity to those countries suffering loss and damage greater than 5% of GDP on the independent verification that a climate or natural disaster event has occurred. It happened to us this year in Barbados with Hurricane Elsa. And of course, we know of the continued threats to each of us, and we are still, my friends, in the hurricane season. The base goal should be that the SDR allocation under the trust should at least match the current $100 billion in financing agreed to previously. And indeed, it is consistent with the request that other developing countries are making for the reallocation of the SDRs. For if we don't do that, as the Secretary General pointed out yesterday, we will ensure that the money, the SDRs, are distributed to the countries who do not need it and whose actions have led to us being here. Finally, that there is a commitment by our development banks and our financial institutions following the example set by Barbados to issue natural disaster clauses like Barbados, like Grenada, in new loan agreements or existing loan agreements where possible to provide the much needed liquidity in a crisis without pushing our loans into disorderly default. It is better that lenders and borrowers know with specificity what will happen on the event of a climate event rather than wondering whether countries will be able to repay the funds. And we raised this as recent as this morning with the president of the Inter-American Development Bank who understands the critical nature, we believe, of the battle that we are fighting here. And it is without um, any form of contradiction that we must see the Paris rule book completed at this COP, leaving and ensuring that we have already lost more than a year to COVID and therefore we've not seen the pace of negotiations proceed with the expediency uh, uh, that we would like. To conclude, my friends, my fellow leaders, ladies and gentlemen, our alliance has allowed our collective voice to be heard on the world stage. As we advance towards Glasgow now, over the next 40 days, let us please, if ever, we never did it before, let us on this occasion hold fast to our mandate and our responsibility to our small island states and the developing countries that are in our group, such that our citizens may be given a chance to build a future. We do so on a proud history that EOSIS and its member countries have played one of the most pivotal roles in climate change negotiations over the last three decades. And that we have served, my friends, as the conscience and the strong moral voice that the world so needed when others were not listening. Let us ensure that as a conscience of the convention, it falls to us to make these voices heard because why? Our cause is a just cause and our call therefore to action must be a strong call. Barbados pledges its own determined actions and its unshakable support in this fight, my brother Gaston. And we look forward to your leadership as we go forward into Glasgow over the next 40 days. Thank you, my brother.